Brought to you by wikivd.com Yankee Stadium Yankee Stadium is a stadium located in the concourse section of the Bronx, a borough of New York City. It serves as the home ballpark for the New York Yankees of Major League Baseball. The $2.3 billion stadium built with $1.2 billion in public subsidies replaced the original Yankee Stadium in 2009. It is located one block north of the original on the 24-acre former site of Macombs Dam Park. The 8-acre site of the original stadium is now a public park called Heritage Field. The stadium incorporates replicas of some design elements from the original Yankee Stadium. And like its predecessor, it has hosted additional events including college football games, soccer matches, two outdoor NHL games, and concerts. Although Yankee Stadium's construction began in August 2006, the project spanned many years and faced many controversies, including the high public cost and the loss of public parkland. The overall price tag makes the new Yankee Stadium the most expensive stadium ever built. It is also the home park for New York City FC of Major League Soccer. Planning New York Yankees owner George Steinbrenner began campaigning for a new stadium in the early 1980s. Just a few years after the remodeled Yankee Stadium opened, Steinbrenner, at the time, was reportedly considering a move to the Meadowlands Sports Complex in New Jersey. Governor Thomas Keene in 1984 authorized the use of land for a new baseball stadium in the Meadowlands, but the state legislature did not provide financing for the stadium. In a statewide referendum in 1987, New Jersey taxpayers rejected $185 million in public financing for a baseball stadium for the Yankees. Despite the rejection from New Jersey, Steinbrenner frequently used a threatened move there as leverage in negotiations with New York City. In 1988 Mayor Ed Koch agreed to have city taxpayers spend $90 million on a second renovation of Yankee Stadium that included luxury boxes and restaurants inside the stadium and parking garages, and traffic improvements outside. Steinbrenner agreed in principle, but then backed out of the deal. In 1993 Mayor David Dinkins expanded on Cox's proposal by offering his Bronx Center vision for the neighborhood including new housing and new courthouse, and relocating the police academy nearby. In 1993, New York Governor Mario Cuomo proposed using the West Side Yard, a 30-acre rail yard along the west side of Manhattan and owned by the Metropolitan Transportation Authority as the location for new stadium for the Yankees. However Cuomo lost his re-election bid a few months later. By 1995, Steinbrenner had rejected 13 proposals to keep the Yankees in the Bronx. In 1998, Bronx Borough President Fernando Ferrer proposed spending $600 million in public money to add dozens of luxury boxes to the stadium to improve highway and public transportation access and to create a Yankee village with shops, restaurants, and a museum. Steinbrenner rejected this as well. That same year, Mayor Rudy Giuliani unveiled a plan to relocate the Yankees to the West Side Yard for a $1 billion stadium. However, with most of the funding coming from taxpayers, Giuliani tabled the proposal, fearing rejection in a city-wide referendum. The West Side Stadium plan resurfaced in December 2001, and by January 2002, months after the September 11 attacks, Giuliani announced tentative agreements for both the New York Yankees and New York Mets to build new stadiums. He estimated that both stadiums would cost $2 billion with city and state taxpayers contributing $1.2 billion. Michael Bloomberg, 
who succeeded Giuliani as mayor in 2002 called the former mayor's agreements corporate welfare and exercised the escape clause in the agreements to back out of both deals, saying that the city could not afford to build new stadiums for the Yankees and Mets. Bloomberg said that Giuliani had inserted a clause in this deal which loosened the team's leases with the city and would allow the Yankees and Mets to leave the city on 60 days' notice to find a new home elsewhere if the city backed out of the agreement. At the time, Bloomberg said that publicly funded stadiums were a poor investment. Bloomberg's blueprint for the stadium was unveiled in 2004 at the same time as the plan for the Mets' new stadium. City Field, the final cost for the two stadiums was more than $3.1 billion. Taxpayer subsidies accounted for $1.8 billion. Construction Groundbreaking ceremonies for the stadium took place on August 16, 2006. The 58th anniversary of Babe Ruth's death with Steinbrenner Bloomberg, and then Governor of New York George Pataki among the notables donning Yankees hard hats and wielding ceremonial shovels to mark the occasion. The Yankees continued to play in the previous Yankee Stadium during the 2007 and 2008 seasons while their new home stadium was built across the street. The community was left without Parkland for five years. During construction of the new stadium, a construction worker and avid Boston Red Sox fan buried a replica jersey of Red Sox player David Ortiz underneath the visitors dug out with the objective of placing a hex on the Yankees much like the curse of the Bambino that had allegedly plagued the Red Sox long after trading Ruth to the Yankees. After the worker was exposed by co-workers he was forced to help exhume the jersey. The Yankees organization then donated the retrieved jersey to the Jimmy Fund a charity started in 1948 by the Red Sox National League rivals. The Boston Braves were long championed by the Red Sox and particularly associated with Ted Williams. The worker has since claimed to have buried a 2004 American League Championship Series program scorecard but has not said where he placed it. These attempts didn't have much effect upon the home team, though the Yankees went on to win the 2009 World Series at the end of their first MLB season in the new stadium. Features the new stadium is meant to evoke elements of the original Yankee Stadium, both in its original 1923 state and its post-renovation state in 1976. The exterior resembles the original look of the 1923 Yankee Stadium. The interior, a modern ballpark with greater space and increased amenities, features a playing field that closely mimics the 1988-2008 dimensions of the old stadium. The current stadium features 4,300 club seats and 68 luxury suites. Design and layout The stadium was designed by the architectural firm Populous. The exterior was made from 11,000 pieces of Indiana limestone along with granite and precast concrete. It features the building's name V-cut and gold leaf lettered above each gate. The interior of the stadium is adorned with hundreds of photographs capturing the history of the Yankees. The New York Daily News newspaper partnered with the Yankees for the exhibition. The Glory of the Yankees photo collection which was selected from the Daily News collection of over 2,000 photographs, sports, to curate the nearly 1,300 photographs that adorn the building. From sources including the Daily News Getty Images, the Baseball Hall of Fame, and Major League Baseball, the seats are laid out similar to the original stadium's stands with grandstand seating that stretches beyond the foul poles, as well as bleacher seats beyond the outfield fences. 
The field level and main level comprise the lower bowl with suites on the H and grandstand level comprising the upper bowl. Approximately of the stadium seating is in the lower bowl the inverse. From the original Yankee Stadium, 50,287 fans can be seated, with a standing room capacity of 52,325. The new stadium seating is spaced outward in a bowl. Unlike the stacked tiers design at the old stadium, this design places most fans farther back, but lower to the field by about an average of 30 feet. Over 56 suites are located within the ballpark tripled the amount from the previous stadium. Seats are 19 wide up from the previous stadium's 18 wide seats while there is 33 of legroom up from 29.5 in of legroom in the previous stadium. Many lower level seats are cushioned, while all seats are equipped with cup holders to allow for the extra seating space. The stadium's capacity is reduced by more than 4,000 seats in comparison to the previous stadium. Many design elements of the ballpark's interior are inspired by the original Yankee Stadium. The roof of the new facility features a replica of the frieze that was a trademark of the previous ballpark. In the original Yankee Stadium, a copper frieze originally lined the roof of the upper deck stands but it was torn down during the 1974-75 renovations and replicated atop the wall beyond the bleachers. The new stadium replicates the frieze in its original location along the upper deck stands. Made of steel coated with zinc for rust protection it is part of the support system for the cantilevers holding up the top deck and the lighting on the roof. The wall beyond the bleacher seats is cut out to reveal the subway trains as they pass by, like they were in the original facility. A manually operated auxiliary scoreboard is built into the left and right field fences. In the same locations it existed in the pre-renovation iteration of the original Yankee Stadium. Between the exterior perimeter wall and interior of the stadium is the Great Hall a large concourse that runs between gates 4 and 6, with seven-story ceilings. The Great Hall features more than 31,000 SQFT of retail space and is lined with 20 banners of past and present Yankees superstars. The Great Hall features a 5 by LED ribbon display as well as a 25 feet by 36 feet LED video display above the entrance to the ballpark from Dactronics, a company in Brookings, South Dakota. Monument Park, which features the Yankees' retired numbers as well as monuments and plaques dedicated to distinguish Yankees has been moved from its location beyond the left field fences in the original Yankee Stadium to its new location beyond the center field fences at the new facility. The newly relocated Monument Park is now situated under the sports bar. Black shades cover the monuments on the back wall during games to prevent interference with the vision of the batter. The new location of the monuments is meant to mirror their original placement in center field at the original pre-renovation Yankee Stadium, albeit when they were on the playing field. The transfer of Monument Park from the old stadium to the new stadium began on November 10, 2008. The first monuments were put in place on February 23, 2009. Yankees pitcher Mariano Rivera requested that the Yankees reposition the team's bullpen, as well as add a door to connect the Yankees' bullpen to Monument Park in order to allow access to it by Yankee relievers. The organization complied with his request. Field dimensions and playing surface The field dimensions for the outfield fences have the same distance markers as the original facility prior to closing yet the dimensions are not identical due to the design of the right field stands and the inclusion of an embedded manual scoreboard. The right field wall is an average of 5 feet closer to home plate 
Overall the fences measure 318 feet to left field 399 feet to left center field 408 feet to center field 385 feet to right center field and 314 to right field. At the old Yankee Stadium, the right field wall curved from the right field corner to straightaway center while at the new ballpark the fence takes a sharp almost entirely straight angle. This results in a difference at certain points between the right field markers of as much as 9 feet. The dimensions in left field are substantially the same despite the presence of an embedded auxiliary scoreboard there as well. The outfield fences measure 8 feet high, from the left field foul pole until the Yankees' bullpen when the fences begin to gradually descend in height until the right field foul pole where they are only 8 feet tall. This also marks a decrease from the previous Yankee Stadium where the outfield walls stood at a height of approximately 10 feet. The distance from home plate to the backstop is 52 feet, a reduction of 20 feet from the previous facility. The field is made up of Kentucky bluegrass, the same surface as the previous stadium which is grown on a 1,300-acre farm in Bridgeton, New Jersey. The grass is equipped with a drainage system that makes the field playable an hour after taking two in of rain. Amenities and facilities Yankee Stadium features a wide array of amenities. It contains 63% more space, 500,000 SQFT more in total than the previous stadium with wider concourses and open sight lines on concourses along with 227 miles of wired Ethernet cable. The building has sufficient fiber-optic cable wiring that Cisco Vice President and Treasurer David Holland calls the building future-proof. Over 1,100 high-definition video monitors are placed within the stadium and approximately $10 million worth of baseball merchandise is housed within the ballpark. The center field scoreboard manufactured by Mitsubishi Diamond Vision measures 59 by 101 feet and offers 5,925 SQFT of viewing area. It was the third largest high-definition scoreboard in the world when it opened. Since then, it has also been surpassed by the world's largest scoreboard at 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 the Philadelphia Phillies Citizens Bank Park displaying 5,925 feet squared of video. The scoreboard can display four 1080p high-definition images simultaneously. The Yankees clubhouse features 30,000 square feet of space, over 2.5 times the space of the clubhouse from the previous facility. The dressing area alone features 3,344 SQFT of space with each locker equipped with a safety deposit box and touchscreen computer. The Yankees clubhouse features a weight room, training room, video room and lounge area. While both teams' clubhouses have their own indoor batting cages, the Yankees therapy room features a hydrotherapy pool with an underwater treadmill. The Yankees are believed to be the first team to chemically treat their uniforms, as well as the showering surfaces with an antibacterial agent that reduces the risk of infection. The New York Yankees Museum located on the lower level at Gate 6 displays a wide range of Yankees memorabilia. A ball wall features hundreds of balls autographed by past and present Yankees and there are plans to eventually add autographs for every living player who has played for the Yankees. The centerpiece of the museum is a tribute to Don Larson's perfect game in the 1956 World Series, with a commemorative home plate in the floor and statues of Larson pitching to Yogi Berra, along with a facsimile of a current locker from the Yankees clubhouse. Fans can view the locker of the late Thurman Munson which sat unoccupied in the previous stadium's Yankee clubhouse in honor of Munson. The ballpark offers a wide choice of restaurants, 
There are 25 fixed concessions stands along, with 112 movable ones. A hard rock cafe is located within the ballpark but it is open to anyone. At the 161st Street and River Avenue entrance year-round, the Hard Rock Cafe at Yankee Stadium officially opened on March 30, 2009 and an opening ceremony took place on April 2, 2009. A steakhouse called NYY Steak is located beyond right field. Celebrity chefs will occasionally make appearances at the ballpark's restaurants and help prepare food for fans in premium seating over the course of the season. Above Monument Park in center field is the Mohegan Sun Sports Bar, whose tinted black glass acts as the ballpark's batter's eye. After the 2016 season, the Yankees began doing updates to Yankee Stadium including the Master Pass batter's eye deck and Frank's Red Hot Terrace and Toyota Terrace. The Master Pass Batters Eye Deck above the Mohegan Sun Sports Bar is an outdoor gathering space in center field with clear full views of the playing field available to all ticketed guests. The Frank's Red Hot Terrace and Toyota Terrace overlook the visitors and Yankees bullpens respectively. The new at stools and large screen TVs. The new Budweiser Party Decks located at sections 311 and 328 in the upper deck feature shaded standalone bar areas serving beer cocktails and food. There is a new Sunrun Kids Clubhouse located on the 300 level in right field and outfitted with Yankees-themed playground equipment. Opening and Public Perception Although Yankee Stadium has been praised for its amenities it also has been widely criticized for high ticket prices. Seats within the first eight rows in the lower bowl called the Legends Suite are among the highest price tickets in professional sports. Tickets cost $510 on average. The most expensive tickets cost $2,600 each. Legends Suite seats have been regularly empty with many ticket holders in this section having given up their tickets and others remaining unsold. Despite most other seats in the ballpark selling out, this has created an embarrassing image on television of the seats behind home plate being almost completely vacant. Consequently a surplus of tickets for legend seats have emerged in the secondary market and with supply exceeding demand, resale prices Prices have dropped. Empty seats in the Legends Suite could even be seen during the 2009 playoffs including World Series games. Even though all playoff games were sellouts, Legends Suite ticket holders were in the lounges and the restaurant underneath instead of their seats. Overall the average ticket price is $63 the highest in baseball. Legends suite seats are also separate from the other lower bowl seating and are vigorously patrolled by stadium security with the divider being described as a concrete moat. Fans who do not have tickets within this premium section in the front rows are not allowed in the section. This includes standing behind the dugouts during batting practice and to see autographs. The least expensive seats the bleachers initially left many fans disappointed, as the indoor club seating area in center field obstructed the views from bleacher seats on both sides in sections 201 and 239. These severely obstructed sections would ultimately be removed during the 2016-2017 off-season in favor of outdoor bars and patio areas complete with standing terraces accessible to all ticket holders in addition to replacing the seating on top of the center field club with standing terraces, drastically reducing the number of obstructed views from center field in the process. The Yankee Stadium staff was also criticized for an incident during a May 4, 2009 game, which was interrupted by a rain delay fans were told by some staff members that the game was unlikely to resume and consequently 
Many fans exited the stadium only for the game to eventually resume play. The fans that left the ballpark were not permitted to re-enter for the stadium's re-entry policy, and many subsequently got into arguments with stadium personnel. In response to the backlash the Yankees received for the incident, the staff members were required to sign a gag order preventing them from speaking to media but they did indicate that communication for rain delays would be improved. Late in the stadium's first season cracks were seen on the concrete ramps of the stadium. The Yankees are trying to determine whether there was something wrong with the concrete or the ramps installation or design. The company involved in inspecting the concrete was indicted on charges that its employees either faked or failed to perform some required tests and falsified the results of others. The stadium has also been criticized for its lack of fan noise. During a Sunday night baseball telecast in 2012, commentator and former Red Sox manager Terry Francona spoke about the different atmospheres in the old and new stadiums, saying that as a visiting team, especially for the Red Sox, by the time the anthem was over you couldn't wait to get back in the dugout. Now a little different a fan sitting around down there by the dugout. Games at the new stadium do not feature the same deafening crowd moments and often sound eerily silent. The lack of fan noise was noticeable in the 2012 playoffs as well with thousands of unsold seats. For Game 5 of the ALDS and Games 1 and 2 of the ALCS. This is a very easy place to play now, said Quinton Berry of the Detroit Tigers, the Yankees' ALCS opponents. Coming from Oakland, the fans there were so rowdy, it was easier to come here. In his autobiography The Closer, the Yankees' longtime relief pitcher Mariano Rivera wrote these comments about the new stadiums atmosphere. It doesn't hold noise a home team fervor anywhere near the way the old place did. The old stadium was our tenth man, a loud and frenzied cauldron of pinstriped passion, with a lot of life as in the stands. Maybe I'm wrong but it's hard to see that the new place can ever quite duplicate that. Derek Jeter echoed this sentiment in a September 2014 article in New York magazine. Jeter said he missed the original Yankee Stadium. It was a different feel. The new stadium. It's second to none's all the amenities. For the players it really doesn't get any better. The old stadium if you were at the stadium in the stands. The only place you could see the game was in your seat. Now there's so many suites. And places people can go. So a lot of times it looks like it's empty but it's really not. The old stadium it was more intimidating. The fans were right on top of you. Propensity for home runs In its first season Yankee Stadium quickly acquired a reputation as a band box and a launching pad because of the high number of home runs hit at the new ballpark. Through its first 23 games 87 home runs were hit at the venue easily besting Enron Field's previous record set in 2000. Early in the season, Yankee Stadium was on pace to break Coors Field's 1999 single-season record of 303 home runs allowed, and the hometown Daily News started publishing a daily graphic comparing each stadium's home run totals through a similar number of games. ESPN commentator Peter Gammons denounced the new facility as one of the biggest jokes in baseball during an appearance on Mike and Mike in the morning, and concludes that it was not a very well-planned ballpark. Likewise, Gammons' ESPN colleague Buster only described the stadium as a veritable wind tunnel, and likened it to his childhood Wiffle Ballpark. Newsday columnist Wallace Matthews joined in the criticism labeling the stadium ridiculous and accused the franchise that took ownership of the home run of cheapening it. He suggested that Babe Ruth could have potentially hit 120 
or more home as if he played in the new stadium. For his column, Matthews interviewed former Yankee Reggie Jackson who termed the park too small to contain current player Alex Rodriguez. Jackson estimated that the park might enable the third baseman to hit 75 home runs in a season. A variety of theories have been posited to account for the dramatic increase in home runs at the new Yankee Stadium over the original stadium. Foremost among these the sharper angles of the outfield walls, and the speculated presence of a wind tunnel. During construction of the new ballpark, engineers commissioned a wind study, the results of which indicated there would be no noticeable difference between the two stadiums. The franchise planned a second study but Major League rules prohibit a team from making any changes to the playing field until the off-season. An independent study by the weather service provider AccuWeather in June 2009 concluded that the shape and height of the right field wall rather than the wind is responsible for the proliferation of home runs at the stadium. AccuWeather's analysis found that roughly 20% of the home runs hit at the new ballpark would not have been home runs at the old ballpark due to the gentle curve of its right field corner and its 10 feet wall height. Nothing was observed in wind speeds and patterns that would account for the increase. The number of home runs hit at the new stadium slowed significantly as the season progressed. But a new single season record for most home runs hit at a Yankee home ballpark was nonetheless set in the Yankees' 73rd home game of 2009 when Vladimir Guerrero of the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim hit the 216th home run of the season at the venue surpassing the previous record of 215 set at the original Yankee Stadium in 2005. However, the Yankees' offenses in previous years had employed many home run hitters in 2009. The Yankees hit 108 home runs while playing on the road the second most in baseball behind the Philadelphia Phillies. In 2010, the early rate of home runs were markedly less through May 15, 2010, with 35 home runs hit in 14 games for 2.5 per game. Even though the stadium's home run rate decreased slightly for the 2010 season to 2.73 per game, it was still the highest figure in the majors. However, the prolific home run rate of April and May 2009 that drew criticism has not sustained itself over any season thus far. And while through the first two months of the 2011 season the Yankees hit far more homers than any other team in the majors, Yankee Stadium was not the top home run park. Stadium firsts before the official opening day against the Cleveland Indians April 16, 2009, the Yankees hosted a two-game exhibition series at the stadium in early April against the Chicago Cubs. Grady Sizemore of the Indians was the first player to hit a grand slam off of Yankee pitcher Damaso Marte, the Indians and 2008 Cy Young Award winner. Cliff Lee spoiled the opening of the new stadium by winning 10-2 before the Yankees went to bat. For the first time the bat that Babe Ruth used to hit his first home run at the old Yankee Stadium in 1923 was placed momentarily on home plate. Jorge Posada hit the first Yankee home run in the new ballpark hitting his off Lee in the same game. Russell Brannion while playing for the Seattle Mariners was the first player to hit a home run off of the Mohegan Sun restaurant in center field. Like its predecessor, the new Yankee Stadium hosted the World Series in its very first season in the 2009 World Series. The Yankees defeated the Philadelphia Phillies four games to two. It also became the latest stadium to host a World Series clinching victory by its home team in the venue's first season when 
On November 4, 2009, the Yankees won their 27th World Series championship against the Phillies. The Yankees are the only team to inaugurate two stadiums with World Series wins and also appeared in the 1976 World Series following the refurbishment of the original Yankee Stadium losing to the Big Red Machine in four straight. On October 6, 2011 Detroit Tigers in Game 5 of the ALDS were the first team to eliminate the Yankees at the new Yankee Stadium in the postseason. Many historic milestones and records have been achieved at Yankee Stadium. In 2009, Derek Jeter became the Yankees' all-time hits leader with his 2,722nd hit, surpassing Lou Gehrig's 72-year record. The following season Alex Rodriguez hit his 600th home run at the stadium becoming the youngest player to accomplish the feat. In 2011, three significant milestones were achieved at the stadium. In July, Jeter became the first Yankee to join the 3,000 hit club and collect all 3,000 hits with the franchise. The following month, the Yankees became the first team in history to hit three Grand Slams in a single game. As the regular season drew to a close, Mariano Rivera became the all-time leader in regular season saves when he earned his 602nd save. On April 20, 2016 the Oakland Athletics' Kendall Graveman became the first starting pitcher to bat at Yankee Stadium. Accessibility and Transportation the stadium is reachable via the 161st Street Yankee Stadium Station Complex the same that served the old Yankee Stadium by the of the New York City subway. It is also served by the Yankees East 153rd Street Station of the Metro North Railroad opened on May 23, 2009. This station routinely features Hudson Line train service but on game days Harlem Line and New Haven Line trains from upstate New York and Connecticut, as well as shuttle trains from Grand Central Terminal also stop there. The stadium is also served by the BX1, BX2, BX6, BX6, SBS, and BX13 New York City bus routes. For selector games, C Street provides high-speed ferry service to Highland, New Jersey. Yankee Stadium is accessible by car via the Major Deegan Expressway with connections to the Cross Bronx Expressway, Bruckner Expressway and other highways and roads. Aside from existing parking lots and garages serving the stadium construction, four additional parking garages is planned. The New York State Legislature agreed to $70 million in subsidies for a $320 million parking garage project. On October 9, 2007, the New York City Industrial Development Agency approved $225 million in tax-exempt bonds to finance construction of three new parking garages that will have 3,600 new parking spaces and renovation of the existing 5,569 parking spaces nearby. Plans initially called for a fourth new garage but this was eliminated before the final approval. The garages will be built by the Community Initiatives Development Corporation of Hudson, New York, a non-profit entity that will use the parking revenue to repay the bonds and pay a $3 million yearly land lease to the City of New York. Parking is expected to cost $25 per game. Soccer. As part of the 2012 World Football Challenge, Chelsea played with Paris Saint Germain on July 22, 2012, in the first soccer match at Yankee Stadium. The match ended in a 1 1 tie before a crowd of 38,202. The stadium hosted another soccer match between AC Milan and Real Madrid on August 8, 2012. Real Madrid won 5-1 before a crowd of 49,474. 
Chelsea also played Manchester City there on May 25, 2013 which ended in a 5-3 win for City. On June 11, 2013 Spain defeated the Republic of Ireland 2-0 in a friendly match at the stadium. On April 21, 2014 it was announced that New York City FC, a major league soccer expansion team owned jointly by the New York Yankees and Manchester City, would play in Yankee Stadium from 2015 until their new stadium is completed. NYCFC played their first game at Yankee Stadium on March 15, 2015. Because of the unique dimensions of the Yankee Stadium field, the playing surface of the soccer pitch is 110 yards long by 70 yards wide, the smallest field in all of Major League Soccer and the smallest allowed by FIFA's international guidelines. College Football the Notre Dame Fighting Irish played a college football game at Yankee Stadium against the Army Black Knights on November 20, 2010, with the Irish defeating the Black Knights 27-3. This marked the two teams' first meeting in the Bronx since 1969. Army played Rutgers in 2011, and played against Connecticut in 2014. Also in 2014 Lehigh, and Lafayette played the 150th edition of their college football rivalry game at Yankee Stadium on November 22, 2014. Both teams played to a sold-out stadium, Lafayette winning 27-7. On November 12, 2016 Fordham University beat Holy Cross 54-14 in the 53 meeting of the Ram Crusader Cup. Since 2010 Yankee Stadium has hosted the Pinstripe Bowl an annual college football bowl game. The inaugural bowl pitted Syracuse against Kansas State on December 30, 2010. Syracuse defeated Kansas State 36-34 in a shootout before a crowd of 38,274. On November 4, 2017, Yankee Stadium will host a college football game between Big Ten Conference rivals Rutgers and Maryland. Hockey The first National Hockey League event took place on January 26, 2014 between the New York Rangers and the New Jersey Devils as part of the 2014 NHL Stadium Series. The Rangers also faced off against the New York Islanders on January 29, 2014 under the deep cold outdoor weather. The Rangers won both matches 7-3 and 2-1 respectively. Both games were expected to draw spectators at almost the full capacity of the stadium. At 50,000 people, the Devils and Islanders never played an outdoor game before this series. Other events The first non-baseball event at the current version of Yankee Stadium took place on the evening of Saturday, April 25, 2009, when senior pastor Joel Osteen of Lakewood Church held what was dubbed as a historic night of Hope Christian prayer service. A New York University graduation ceremony took place on May 13, 2009, with the address being delivered by U.S. Secretary of State and former New York Senator Hillary Clinton. The 2010 NYU ceremony featured alumnus Alec Baldwin as a speaker. President Bill Clinton spoke at the 2011 ceremony. The promotional tour for the Manny Pacquiao-Miguel Cotto fight began with an event at Yankee Stadium on September 10, 2009. On June 5, 2010, Yuri Foreman fought Koto in the first boxing match in the Bronx since 1976. The fight was referred to as the Stadium Slugfist. Koto defeated Foreman with a TKO in the ninth round. Koto captured the WBA Super Welterweight title and his fourth world title before a crowd of 20,272. Ticket Policy Effective 2016 printed electronic tickets cannot be used at New York Yankees. 
and New York City FC matches at Yankee Stadium. Only traditional hard stock tickets, and those issued via a mobile ticketing system are accepted. The team justified the decision by stating that it was meant to combat fraud associated with printed digital tickets. However, it was also believed that the team was trying to specifically hinder the ticket resale service StubHub, which competed against an official resale service run by Ticketmaster known as the Yankees Ticket Exchange. The YTE is subject to a price flooring policy meaning that tickets may only be discounted up to a certain amount. Although StubHub is the official ticket resale partner of Major League Baseball the Yankees, as well as the Los Angeles Angels and Chicago Cubs had opted out of this agreement. Owing to the Yankees' ownership of the team New York City FC announced on March 11, 2016 that its matches would also be subject to this policy. At the team's March 13, 2016 home opener, Although the team stated that they would be phasing in mobile ticketing by introducing additional verification steps for printed tickets before the policy takes full effect in April, reports indicated that the stadium was turning away fans with printed tickets leading to long queue lines as well as few attendees inside the stadium itself. In an interview, with WFAN Radio Yankees Kulon Trust explained that the measures were to help combat ticket resale arguing that the team did not want fans to purchase premium seats at bargain prices because they would be filled by someone who has never sat in a premium location before. On the April 3rd 2016 episode of the HBO News comedy series Last Week Tonight host John Oliver responded to Trost's remarks arguing that he was saying that rich people couldn't bear to sit next to people who aren't as rich. As a further satire of Trost's arguments against discounted resale, Oliver then announced a contest in which viewers were invited to send photos of themselves dressed as if they had never sat in a premium location before, with winners offered the ability to purchase a pair of Legends seats from one of the first home three games of the season for 25 cents. The stunt was successful, leading to the presence of several costumed attendees in Legends seats during the opening games. Team President Randy Levine responded positively to the stunt thanking Oliver for having bought tickets to begin with and remarked that everyone was welcome at Yankee Stadium. On June 27, 2016 the Yankees announced that it had reached a deal with StubHub for it to become its new official ticket resale partner beginning on July 7, 2016 and allow season ticket holders to sell electronic tickets rather than mail physical tickets. To the buyer, the service will still be subject to a price flooring policy, but the team stated that the new arrangement would provide a superior, more secure and better experience. Brought to you by Wikivd.com Would you like to know more?